welcome to United Church Online. We're glad that you've joined us today. If you are new to United Church, we'd love to stay in touch with you. So why don't you fill out the connect card in the description or visit our website for more information. Get your Bibles, that books, and pens ready and let's receive the word together. So as you've seen, it's obviously a bit of a slightly different Sunday. And the reason for it is because we just, you know, we're latching onto this thought that it's important to create altar moments in our lives. An altar moment is what you would have recognized many years ago uh, or many centuries ago, like from the scriptures, you know, where, you know, God would ask the nation of Israel to build an altar every time something amazing would happen. They would build an altar. Like Shani said earlier on, you know, I love the thought that she shared about, you know, there might be a past that we, we, we don't want to go back to, you know, a version of ourselves, what we were like before Christ. And every now and again, I go back and I look at mine, and I'm so glad I'm not where I used to be. In fact, let me show you what things used to look like so you know <laughs> what I'm grateful for. When I say Jesus saved me, you need to understand. You need to be grateful that that version doesn't exist in you. Otherwise, your purse would be gone. Your purse, your necklace, your handbag, your car, your cell phone, alles. I'm just joking, I wasn't that bad. I'm just so grateful. <laughs> I don't have many photos of me as a teenager, but the ones I have, I hide very well. This was before the age of social media. You remember those days when you didn't have to put every photo up? Thank you, Jesus, that there's a part of you that is hidden from the world. So, so for me, I, I have these altar moments built into my life where... It's just moments where I can look back and say, thank you, Jesus. Like, I know where I was, I know where I would have been had it not been for Christ. And I'm sure you and I have the same moments. And so, built into the Israelite nation's sojourning journey, God would say to them, hey, after a major battle, after something has happened, I want you to take some rocks and I want you to pile them up. And I want that to be a memory. One day, as you're traveling through space and time and you come across these and your kids are like, what is this all about? You can look at your kids and say, let me tell you what God did at this very spot. This is where God rescued us. This is where the rivers parted. This is where we crossed the sea on dry ground. This is where we defeated our enemies. See, if we don't take the time to do this, what ends up happening is you and I go through life so quickly that we forget to look for the little miracles. So we expect to see the big miracles, you know, those, those crazy ones, those ones that, you know, we want to shout from the rooftops. But, but can I put to you today that there are little miracles every single day, little encounters that if we don't stop and pay attention, yeah. that we won't even realize that that was God's hand. Yeah. The way you happen to cross paths with that person at that moment in time, at just the right time, is when God came through and, and something happened and you, you think, oh, that was just, you know, by chance. No, 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 that was God's orchestration. And we miss it. So here's what happens. Because we live in our fog, the mess that we sometimes go through. If your marriage has been in a, a tough season, because you live in that, that's all we see. And you can't see anything apart from that. If you are going through a health crisis, all we see is the health crisis. We can't see anything else. If you are going through some mental health or internal challenge or whatever it is, that tends to be the only thing we see. But... When we pause to create an altar moment, we are forced to step back. And the moment you and I step back, what happens is we gain perspective. Oh, wow. Things look different. Last year, this time, I was stressing about something, and today it's something completely different. I remember saying that said, if you want to test your memory, try and remember what you were stressing about last year, this time. And for most of us, it doesn't matter anymore. Have a look at Exodus chapter 17, it says this, after the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. He said, they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne and now the Lord will be at war with, the Amalek generation, with Amalek generation after generation. It's crazy that when we stop to reflect and pause and remember, we also walk away with a greater revelation of who God is. The fact that Moses was able to name God, Yahweh Nisi. Not many people have had the privilege of attributing a name to God. We might have never known God. We've known of God the provider, 
But after that moment, we know God the provider. We might have known of God the healer, but after we pause and reflect, we begin to personally know God the healer. Do you know what I mean? And so it's so important that when we step back and we look and we gain perspective, here's what the Israelites did. They would take a moment to pause, reflect, give thanks, and continue forward. They would pause, reflect, give thanks, and continue. They would pause from their journey, they would reflect and there were certain scriptures they would read to remind them of what God had done for them and then they would reflect and, and give thanks. They would have feasts and meals as Thanksgiving. There was a season called Thanksgiving offering. There was Thanksgiving meals that was embedded in their culture and then after giving thanks, they would continue on their journey. And so it's so fitting that you and I do this. We, we're not Americans. We don't have to carve turkeys and have parades. That's very much an American tradition. But we can redeem it in a different way and say, God, we're just going to set aside time to give thanks, to pause and reflect. So I want you to just for a second, take the time to pause as we gain perspective. We, we take the time to pause and we gain perspective so that we can see God's hand upon our lives, upon our families, upon our marriages, upon our journeys and whatever that is. We take the time to pause and gain perspective to see the miracles. You might not have gotten what you wanted out of this year. Things might have not gone your way. Maybe you're one of those New Year's resolution of people that's got a whole book that you write things down in and then you look back, you're like, none of these things happened. Maybe you're a vision board kind of person and you've got all the visions on your board and none of that happened. Maybe this was a tough year and you struggled with your kids. But maybe the revelation as you gain perspective could be, God, thank you that this year... <laughs> I learned to become a more patient parent. Maybe that's the perspective. Maybe this was a tough year and you lost employment. But you can shift perspective and say, God, was this, this was the first year I've had to fully rely on you. In the past, I relied on you, but I knew I could make my own plan. Today, as I stand, I've had to fully rely on you. Maybe... This was the worst year relationally. Maybe you're just thinking to yourself, man, I, there's no way. Is this, or everyone that was close to me just fell away. But maybe if you shift perspective, this was the year you learned to confide in God alone. And say, God, I've known you as the close and comforting God, but this year I got to see it firsthand. Maybe it wasn't even a bad year. Maybe you've had a great year. Maybe you finally started something that you've been planning. Maybe it was a business venture. Maybe you started it and kicked it off and it went well and maybe you learned this year what it looks like to fully experience God's faithfulness. Maybe this is a year that you look back and you finally got the job you were praying for and so you've had to look back and give thanks and say, God, this is what your provision looks like in a different way. Maybe you finally overcame sin or left a destructive pattern and you can look back and say, this year I got to experience God's freedom. I know what it is to fully live in freedom. I've always prayed for this and this year I've walked away from it and now I'm free. See, whatever that looks like, we need to create space for perspective. Yeah. Not just individually. We do this as individuals, but we also do this as families. So many people, you know, when you go away, when December comes and you decide to finally take that trip, all you do is you go away and you have fun. C can I encourage you, in the fun, look, create a moment where you look back on the year. Over dinner, at a restaurant, at the dinner table, whatever it is, gather with your family and just begin to talk about what was. I, I guarantee you that brings about completely different perspectives. So we get to do that as individuals, as families, but we also get to do that as a church. Many of you, you're, you, you know, you came to United Church this year. This is the first year you've experienced this community. Many of you um, have been here for many years. You've, you've kind of, you're like part of the furniture. I've been trying to get rid of you and I can't. And you've just decided... <sighs> I've just made peace with it. You're going to be a part of the family. That's okay. But we get to do this as a family. And so what we're going to do is, since you're part of the family, I'm going to take you on a trip down memory lane. And for some of you, you might be way too young for this. Some of you might be old and you might be thinking, man, I remember this like yesterday. But just for a moment, I need us to appreciate where we are at. Because if you've been here for anything less than five years, you have no idea what God has done. So have a look at this video. It's only a few minutes long, but you're going to see some faces and you're going to laugh. Please don't laugh too loud, okay? <laughs> just laugh on the inside. And let's just take a trip down memory lane and look at God's faithfulness. Have a look at this. Thank you.
I look back at some of those and I'm like, yes, like Jesus, what have you brought us through? Who remembers COVID church? Social distance church? Who remembers online church? Oh, I don't miss those days. Who has been here? Who remembers our outdoor Easter service? Okay, okay. Who remembers the day we became United Church? I saw some pictures there from that, from One Way to United. Who was here for the 2015 renovation when the cafe and the school went up? Okay, who was here for the 2010 renovation when we, um, when we finally you know, broke these out and raised the roof? How many? Okay, okay. Oh, wow, look at that. How many of you were here? That second image that said Assemblies of God when they built from the vegetable shop out into this building. There's like, uh, I was like, there's very few of you. Hey, how good has God been? And the rest of us, we come, we sit, we cheer, we clap our hands, we look at things, we're like, yeah, this looks a bit weird. It's like, ah, you don't know. Who was here, those red, that red letter board? Hey, those Chinese red letter boards. Yes, like, I, there are so many things I remember. I remember the first day I came to this church, I was in youth. I was 18. And um, it looked horrible. It looks like, it looked nice at the time, but compared to what it looks like now, it looked horrible back then. There was Hessian, this, this, the walls were all Facebook, you, you saw the images. And so what the youth would do is they would cover the entire building in black cloth. Listen, the youth worked, they worked hard. So the entire auditorium all the way around, black cloth from the ceiling to the floor, right? And they would change the entire appearance. Then we just, eventually we painted it black, so they didn't have to do that. And then outside was Hessian that was all between the trees. And I remember coming for the first time and I thought this was a vibe. I was like, what? You know, people were hanging out and all of that. And I, I went to the team and I was like, hey guys, how do I join? And they said, no, go to that girlie over there. And I looked and that girlie over there is the lady that is now my wife. And um, I know, I know, I know. And she, she, came, she was like, hey, my name is Shani. Crazy, absolutely crazy. And I was like, hey, I want to join. She's like, okay, follow me. And she gave me forms to fill in and I've never looked back. This is the place where as an 18 year old, I found Jesus. This is the place where I got a girlfriend. I proposed, I married her. This is the place where we dedicated our children. This is the place where our kids learned the value of church. And this is the place where my oldest son at nine years old is now serving. This is the value of looking back so that we can look forward. And so many of the families in this place is the same. And this is why this morning we're having a baby dedication. And so if you are dedicating your baby, can, can I invite you up? You are more than welcome to come to the front. Those families who are going to be dedicating, this is going to be the moment where we're just going to take some time and commit to God, you and your family, as you make the decision to raise your children in the ways of God. And the reason why I'm doing it now is because this is the, the same journey we've walked. For many of us, we've walked. They get to walk now. They get to you can come up. No, don't sit down. Come, come, come. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. We've got a few families actually that are coming up this morning. And so they are where many of us have been, where we stand before our church community and you've got moments where you can look back and this is the moment that they are going to look back on. Right? This is the moment that they are going to look back on and say, thank you, God. Look at how young our kids were. Look at how amazing, you know, things looked back then and maybe 10 years from now, the church will definitely look very different and they're going to be able to look back and say, we made the decision as a family to honor God. You're welcome to stand all the way across. And um, this morning, as you make this decision as moms and dads, and um, I firstly want to say that I'm so proud of each of you. I really am. This is a big step. Don't take it lightly. Um, this is a moment where you are standing before an entire church community. Some of them you know, some of them you don't know from a bar of soap. But these are the people who get to witness you take a phenomenal next step in your life. And my prayer over you this morning is that this will be a moment, an altar moment, that you can look back on and remember. Especially at one, two, three o'clock in the morning when your kids have a fever or they're sick, and you just want to shake them and you just want to, you know, say things that you're not allowed to say. Just remember this altar moment. God, I did that thing. <laughs> I need your help. <laughs>
we decide or we make the decision as parents to dedicate our children to the Lord, but it's not just about the children, it's about you. You are making a decision to raise your children according to God's principles. This might be new to you, you might have never done this before. This might be completely different, but this is a moment that you are choosing as a parent to say, God, I'm gonna raise my children in your way, according to your word and upon your principles. It's very different because everybody has something to say about how children are to be raised. Dr. Phil and Oprah and Cosmopolitan and whatever else there is. But this morning you are choosing to run to God at every intersection of parenting. You are choosing to run to God and say, God, I'm going to do this your way. And that's incredibly, incredibly special. And so next to each of you as a family, there is someone designated to lay their hands on you. And for the rest of us, can I encourage us, let's raise our hands at them. You remember what this step was like and this might be daunting or exciting, but this morning I charge each and every one of you as you will answer before God for the salvation and the life of your children to raise them in God's ways, never withholding them from the things of God and always leading them closer to God in everything you do. And so let's close our eyes. Father God, I pray for every child on this platform. God, as we lay hands on them, we say thank you for every gift, every gift that is a young person on the stage. God, you have foreseen them long before they were in their parents' womb. You destined them and you ordained them. Their names are written in your book of life. None of them are an accident. None of them are here by chance or haphazardly. God, you have seen them and you have a future and a purpose for every one of them. God, we thank you this morning that their lives are gonna count for something. We thank you, God, for your hand of protection upon each and every one of them. We thank you, God, that they will walk in your ways all the days of their life. We pray for your provision, we pray for your protection, and we pray, God, that they would come to know you at the tender age that they are right now. May you reveal yourself to them. There's no such thing as a mature age to discover God. From the tender age that they are, they can begin to have a relationship with you. And then God, I pray for every parent on the stage, moms and dads. I pray for them, God. I pray for your hand upon them. And I pray for your blessing upon them. I pray for their provision. And I pray for their protection. I pray for wisdom in every decision that they are gonna make. I pray, God, that whatever they do, they may do it with your strength and with your grace. I pray, God, that they would submit all their decisions before you. And I pray, Jesus, that as they do this, they would see your hand of provision and blessing and protection and guidance in every area of their lives. I pray that their families would be blessed. And I pray that years from now, they would be able to look back upon this altar. And when their children ask things like, why do we have to go to church? that they can look back and say, we made a commitment that we will raise you in God's ways. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. 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 So, congratulations. Again, we're so proud of each and every one of you. So after the service, um, you can take family pictures in the foyer. Um, we want to celebrate with you and we want you to know that this is a special moment. So the team are going to be taking pictures and all of that and we've got some gifts for you. Um, so until then, you're welcome to make your way off stage. Let's give them one more round of applause as they make their way off stage. Congratulations and well done. Oh man, let me, let me just share a moment with you. Ashley was in my youth group when she was young. And she's a parent today. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but Donovan, her brother, was in my class when I did threes and fours. I'm, I'm so emotional, man. This is what it's all about, generation after generation. We look back to gain confidence in God as we look forward, right? So maybe you, you were never part of the previous journey. Maybe your journey started this year, last year, the year before. Maybe you're one of those people, you kind of come to church to just check things out. I'm hoping that this becomes something that would solidify your decision to say, that I'm gonna make this my home. Because 10 years from now, I wanna be able to tell the same story. I wanna be able to tell the story of how I met my wife. <clears throat> All right, correct, young people? How I met my wife in youth. Our youth leader is single, so...
Hey man, Shani was one of my youth leaders. I chose well. But if you do choose our youth leader, just know there's a process involved. There are application forms, three months bank statement. Like, listen, there's a whole thing. Like, you need certified IDs. With proof. Yes, and no, there's no messing around here. We look back so that we gain perspective to look forward. So this morning, we're going to look forward and I have the privilege of pointing you towards God's best for us in the years to come. When is this going to happen? I have no idea. But I know that as we move forward, God has given us a clear picture of what to aim for. So let me, let me, let me give you context. Last year, we made the decision and said, hey, we're going to you know, make some, some room. As you can see, we need to make room. It's, we are desperate for more room. If this is what the service looks like, can you imagine as we continue to grow? And so we decided we're going to go on a journey of making more room. We're going to remove these pillars and um, we're going to create a bit of space. And so we spoke to the architects and um, we said, hey, what's the best way we can do this? And the architects were like, well, let's work out some stuff. So have a look at the first image. And this is what the architect's rendering looks like. So if you can see that up there is the current parents' room. So we've already started the first step, right? And so what's going to happen is from the parents' room, this is going to be the new stage, which means the stage moves 45 degrees so that our church is now at this angle and not this angle. And so that's the best way to utilize space. Also, if you look above the cafe, there will be new office um, space so that our junior youth has a space that they can call theirs, also that can double up as the, the church office during the week where we can meet with people and counsel them and have you know, counseling rooms and all of that. So that's going to come just above there. Um, and then there's another section added outside these doors that will kind of lead to the cafe. So all of this is part of a new design. And here's what's crazy. Above the parents' room and above the back, so that is all the way up there and up there, there will be a gallery with additional seating so that we make more room. So we're gaining height, which means we've got a bit more room. So I struggle to visualize this. And I've showed pictures, I've showed this, these plans to our board and we've done a bunch of things. And so I went back to the architect, I said, hey, listen, I need you to just visualize this for us. So have a look at the next one. This is an image or rendering she gave us um, of what it possibly could look like. There's the office space above the cafe. Um, the cafe is underneath. And here you can see how the auditorium has gained height. It's a little bit higher. Go to the following one and you can see it from a different angle. Don't worry about my car parked over there. That's just... <laughs> I told her not to add it, but she was like, hey man, so I said, okay, it's fine. So, so that you can see, that's the new section that'll come out of this space and lead all the way back to the cafe, so you can see how the height looked. But I'll be honest with you, I looked at this, and I should have been excited, like you should be excited, even though it's fine, it's too late now. Um, I looked at it and I thought, it's, it's great, but it's not exactly what we wanted. Um, and so I went to another friend of mine, her name is Esther, she is an interior architect, and she does design, and so I said to her, I need you to make this what we wanted to be. And I showed her what was going on in our heads and, um, and she perfectly captured what it was. So have a look at the fo following one because this is more like it, okay? This is more like it. So same thing, as you can see, it comes out. There's still space above the deck in the cafe over there and we've definitely gained height. Don't worry, the black isn't the final design. Um, we know obviously people get weird and like, oh, what cult is this? We're just gonna make it dark, 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 dark gray. So. People can come and go to the following one. And so you can see from this angle what the front part will look like. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, and so this gives you a, a glimpse of what the outside is going to look like. And then coming to the inside, because I said to her, look, I need you to give us a visualization of what this is going to look like. Go to the following one. This is what it might look like on the inside, right? So there you can see the, the balcony area, which will be all the way at the back above with the stairs, the stairs will also be where the sound desk is gonna be in that back corner over there, um, going all the way up. And the, you can see the mother's or the new parents' room now, you know, a glimpse of it or the first part of it that we've started. If you go to the following one, this is from the balcony looking down, so you can see a portion of the stage and that's what it will look like. There will be exit doors over there. Um, and so we've gained a lot more room in the space, and if you look at the last one, just a slightly different lighting, um, because we'll be having sound paneling that has LEDs built into them. So that's just an image. I hope this gets you excited, okay? I really hope it does. Don't worry. If you, I know you're thinking what I'm thinking. This is not the service where I ask for money. This is, that one's coming next year. 
I'm just giving you the vision so you can start chewing on it. And look, if you have the money, don't hold it. You can bring it. I, uh, million is spelled M-I-L-L-I-O-N. We're going to need a few of them. This is not the service where I speak about the, the, the details and the logistics. I'm just pointing you to a glimpse of what lies ahead. Is that okay? Um, and we look back to give us confidence so we can look forward. We look back so that we can see what this journey has taken. And while we're looking back, I, there's, there's, I cannot look back without getting emotional and thinking about the people that have made these types of things happen. So there's one family that I would love to honor because they have been there from the beginning. Uncle Dennis and Auntie Agnes. I know you're gonna fight, you're gonna fight me to the death, but would you mind please coming up so I can honor you and just say thank you. So many of you don't know. So you have, you have no idea who these people are and what they've done. They, they aren't the pastors, don't worry. Um, Dennis and Agnes were a part of the original launch team when this team was launched from Vereniging to Van der Beel, 1977. They were part of the original team. Dennis and Agnes have been here from its foundational days. They have given their heart and soul. They raised their families, two boys, in this church. They, fam they, 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 you played keyboard, you didn't sing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Guitar. Their sons played instruments in this church. Their grandchildren was born in this church and have now moved and they're all over the world. Dennis has been an elder in this church for many years. There were times when this church had no pastor and so the elders took up the preaching responsibility among themselves. There were times when there were people, but there were so little. I mean, you tell stories of when the pastor would get up and look at the church and it's just like the front row and he laughs and says, guys, let's just go have coffee. <laughs> That's how small the church was. You were there when the Assemblies of God leadership came to close this church because it wasn't doing well. And somehow last minute they had a change of heart and decided, no, there's something here and have chosen to let the church continue going. You were there. Uncle Dennis was the oversight for the building construction to make it what it is today. He oversaw the project. He was the one that designed some of the steel trusses that sit in the roofs today. Many people don't realize. And so I wanna say thank you, man. We stand on the shoulders of people like you. We have no idea what you've given up. We have no idea the sacrifices you've made. No one will know anything, but you know what you've given up. And today, you know, you come, you sit there, you smile, you laugh. I don't know, you know, I always talk to them and Uncle Dennis says to me, you know, my happiest moments are seeing people get baptized. He says, young people, young people are the life of this church. All they want to see is people get saved and people get baptized. I still try and recruit them. Trust me, Uncle Dennis, I need your help. Nope, nope, I've got dementia. I don't want to do anything. That's what he says to me. So if you can change his mind, that'll be great but I'm so glad for the two of you. And there's so many people, Uncle Peter and Auntie Ruth aren't here. We wish they could be. There's so many other people. We build on their shoulders. And so this is just a small blessing from us just to say thank you so much. And we love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry for doing this to you. <laughs> Can we just honor them one more time? Hey, man. Honestly, you have no idea. They, I can go on. Uncle Dennis bought himself a specific vehicle and kitted it out for missions when we still had missions in Zambia. When everybody was struggling to get cars, he's like, no, he bought himself a car. He kitted it out. He's like, that's the new missions vehicle. He's made so many sacrifices, man. And we only know a, a fraction of them. And so why do we do this? Because 10 years from now, 20 years from now, your, your kids are going to be in the positions that we are today. Generations are going to come and they are going to tell stories of how they met their husbands and wives and how they were kids' church teachers and the kids they used to teach are now leading. In Did you see that photo of me and Ayanda? Did you see how small Ayanda was? I did that on purpose. I was like, just so you know your place. <laughs> Since grade eight, Ayanda came to this church in grade eight. Back, back when he sounded like this. That's how you knew there must have been a voice in there because he used to say, hey, Pastor Randy. 
I need to stop. <laughs> we are definitely going over time, is that okay? Let me read you, I read the, the biography of a man named William Booth. William and Catherine Booth were the two people who founded the Salvation Army. They, are, they were from the 1800s. And what we see as the Salvation Army today, they pioneered from the ground. And William Booth was known as an incredibly like, faithful man. There were times when, even though they set out to feed multitudes, there were days when they didn't have anything. And he was just like, God will make it happen, and God made it happen. And the one thing about William and Catherine Booth is their mission, they didn't set out to feed people. They set out to get people saved. And in the process of getting people saved, people were fed. That was their mission. And in his biography, he was quoted saying this, and these are words that have become very dear to me because this perfectly summarizes our mission. He says this, we are salvation people. This is our specialty. We get people saved, keep people saved, and getting someone else saved. Look at this. Clear your vision, halt, stand still, and afresh, and more fully apprehend and comprehend your calling. You are to be workers together with God for the salvation of fellow man. What is the business of your life? Not merely to save your soul and make yourself meet paradise. No. You are to be a redeemer a savior, a copy of Jesus Christ himself. So consecrate every awakened power to the great end of saving them. Rescue the perishing. There they are all around you, everywhere, crowds upon crowds. Be skillful, improve yourself, study your business, be self-sacrificing. Remember the master. What you lose for his sake and for the sake of the poor souls for whom he died, you shall find again. Stick with it. Having put your hand to the salvation plow, don't look behind you. Our business is the salvation of people. Is to introduce people to a loving God who loves them so deeply and dearly who changes them so profoundly that they cannot but look back, see God's faithfulness, turn around, lift their heads, and continue on the future that God has called them to do. That is our story, and that is the story that awaits so many other people. And that's why if I look at those images, I don't just see a church, a building. I mean, listen, we can build buildings all our lives. That doesn't change. What changes is the fact that families will come to these buildings and they will be changed and transformed and children will grow up in God's ways and families will become stronger and husbands will love their families and people would quit alcohol and drugs and all sorts of things and they will find freedom and wives will find joy in their homes again and God will heal and restore what the enemy has tried to destroy and break down once again. That is what excites me. We believe that this message was helpful to you. We'd love to stay in contact with you, so why don't you follow us on Instagram at United Church SA or contact us on our WhatsApp number. Be blessed. Be blessed.